Hi, welcome to HelpYourMath.com. Um, today we're going to be solving these five problems, ranging from easy to uh, particularly challenging. But by the end of this, you should be able to know how to do this. So the problem is we want to solve for t for all of them. So what this means is that we want t on one side, and only t. So let's start with problem number one. We have v plus at is equal to s. Since our main objective here is to get t by itself, we want to move all these variables on one side. So we see the first variable, s, and we see v. What we can do first is move v to the right-hand side by subtracting it. So we can go minus v, and this cancels out minus v. So what this basically means is that at, or a times t, will equal to s minus v. So now that we have this portion, we still have a, which is being multiplied by t. But we want to get t by itself. Always keep that in mind. So we divide it by a. Divided by a. This cancels out. So now we're just left with t is equal to s minus v over a. So the first problem is done. So now we want to apply the same concept of getting t on one side, as you can see here, and apply this for the next four problems. So now we can move over to number two. In problem number two, we have w plus t over a is equal to p. So this is going to be a little bit trickier because we, are, we have a denominator, and our denominator is a. So first and foremost, we want to move, well, as we always know, we want to get t on one side. But in order to do that, we have to move this denominator on this side. So we set up our equation. And now, to move this on that side, we have to multiply it because it's being divided. So here it can basically mean times a over 1 is equal to p times a over 1. This cancels out. And what you're left with is w plus t over 1, which is just w plus t, equals to p times a over 1, which is just a. So now this problem is starting to look like the problem we did originally. So now we just want to get t by itself. And this is the very simple part. You just have to subtract w from both sides. This cancels out. And we're left with t is equal to pa minus w. So as you can see, when you have a denominator, you want to multiply it to both sides so that it cancels out. So now let's move on to problem number three. Problem number three states v times i minus a times t is equal to p times s. So what we should do first is look at v times i as, as a whole. So don't get confused about oh, since we have two values here, we have to subtract it. No, we just have to move the whole value on this side, which we're basically subtracting the whole value. So in other words, it can be written as vi minus at is equal to ps minus vi minus vi vi cancels out. So now we have negative 8 times t is equal to p times s minus v times i. It looks a little bit like a u, but we're just going to put a v. All right. So again, as we did before, we want to get t by itself. And we see here that negative a times t 
is equal to P times S minus VI. So in order to do that, our rule is we divide. But remember, we have to treat this as a whole. So when we divide A, we want to divide it from this as a whole. So always remember that rule. So we can divide it by negative A, divide it by negative A, and this cancels out, and the negative A stays at the bottom here. So now we do have our T is equal to PS minus VI over negative A.